In the article, published in the journal Sports, Alex and colleagues conducted a systematic review of meta-analysis, investigating the effects of plyometric jump training on the physical fitness of combat sport athletes. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will be a short summary of Alex and colleagues' research. Regarding the inclusion criteria, studies were only included in the analysis if the plyometric jump training program lasted three weeks or more, performed by healthy combat sport athletes, and at least one measure related to physical fitness, for example, counter-movement jump height, and or sport-specific performance, for example, kicking speed, was recorded pre- and post-training, which was then compared to a control group. No restriction was placed on fitness, competitive level, sex or age. In the end, 12 studies, totalling 292 participants, were included in the analysis. The majority of participants were aged between 11 and 25 years, with most participants being male. And in terms of the findings, performing 2-3 plyometric jump training sessions per week over a 4-12 to week period induced small to moderate improvements in maximal strength, vertical jump height, change of direction speed and specific performance outcomes, for example fencing movement velocity, while total body mass including fat mass and muscle mass remained unchanged, indicating an increase in strength and power relative to body mass, which is a key determinant for success in combat sport athletes. These improvements may be attributed to positive neuromuscular changes, as well as an increase in Achilles tendon stiffness. Therefore, plyometric jump training exercises can be said to transfer well to combat sport performance, likely because they mimic the fast force production movements required in competitions. Regarding training prescription, a minimal effective dose of plyometric jump training may involve two sessions per week over a four-week period. In terms of intensity, despite being difficult to prescribe, once appropriate technique has been established and progression considered, an effort can be made to perform jumps maximally. Therefore, it's recommended to perform plyometric jump training early on during a session when athletes are less fatigued. Regarding exercise selection, a variety of jumps can be performed. If drop jumps are performed, depending on individual capability, box drop height can range between 15 and 50 centimetres. In terms of the number of jumps per session, this may range depending on factors such as the intensity and types of jumps used. For example, for exercises such as rope jumps, 300 jumps per session may be regarded as an effective initial dose. And for loaded jumps, such as jump squats, as low as 9 repetitions per session may represent a minimal effective initial dose. When it comes to recovery, no more than 15 seconds rest between each jump is recommended, and 30 seconds or more between sets is suggested. For recovery between sessions, 48 hours or more may be effective. Also, it's recommended that jump training programmes for combat sport athletes follow a progressive approach to overload through progressing the volume or exercise type, or a mixture of both. And although plyometric jump training may be effective when applied in isolation, from a practical perspective, greater effects are likely experienced when plyometric jump training is combined with traditional resistance training, supported by the fact that studies that applied a combined training approach attained a greater improvement in counter-movement jump height compared to those that only focused on plyometrics. To help further enhance plyometric training prescription in combat sport athletes, future studies may assess the impact of the type of surface, tapering, and exercise intensity, and implement longer programs, as well as include more female athletes. And that concludes this presentation. I recommend you check out the full article. The link is in the description. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.